You can chase it, but you'll never actually reach it. And isn't that the point? Daniel Pink in his best-selling book, Drive, he calls mastery an asymptote. And that is something that you can chase forever, but never fully touch. And see, that's combat sports and martial arts because no fighter ever truly arrives. There's always another level, another adjustment, or another weakness to fix. Psychologist Anders Ericsson proved this with decades of research on what he called deliberate practice. So the difference between good and great isn't talent. It's thousands of hours of purposeful, structured, uncomfortable training. It's not mindless reps or just rolling for fun. It's drilling the same sweep a thousand times or doing pad work when you're absolutely exhausted. It's sparring with someone that's just a little bit better than you so that it pushes you into that zone where growth happens. And neuroscience explains why it works. First, there's neuroplasticity. So every rep carves new neural pathways. In fact, MRI studies show that black belts literally have denser white matter in motor and sensory regions compared to beginners. And then you have the anterior cingulate cortex, and that lights up whenever you make mistakes and you correct them. It's your brain rewiring itself in real time. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. And then there's dopamine. Oh, we all love it, but it doesn't just reward kind of the knockout. Dopamine actually spikes in the pursuit of progress. So that moment when your timing, it feels sharper than last week, or your footwork finally clicks, that is the brain's reward system, locking the skill in and keeping you hooked. This is why mastery fuels fighters for life because the grind it never ends, but that's the point. It's in the struggle, in the failure, the endless refinement, all of that where the real joy lives. Because mastery isn't about reaching perfection, it's about falling in love with the pursuit.